or I think we're overdue a bit of woo woo. <laughs>We're definitely overdue with the woo-woo. The news has been red hot. And so I've been covering lots and lots of politics. But today's video is not going to be about politics. It's going to be all about the woo-woo. I'm going through Patreon at the moment to see uh, what kind of questions there are. And then I'll go on to the Ask Ellie um, a question video comment section. So let's have a look here. Who is this? This person has my face. Hang on. Um, oh, Janet on Patreon. It was my reply that had a face. Janet on Patreon said, um, Hi, Ellie. Hello. What do the cards have to say about night paralysis or night terrors, which are two different things? Neurologists have their own explanation for it, whatever that is, but it doesn't explain what it is or why it happens to so many people. I've had them for some time and I found that mentally reciting a prayer... Ah, we'll break it. Sometimes it feels, I feel it coming during sleep, like a wave of some sort. Is it pure neurology or is there something more etheric or paranormal about it? If it is neurology, why the terror? All right, Janet, so these are two different things. Uh, the sleep paralysis is one thing and the night terrors is something else. Let's have a look at the sleep paralysis first. Oh, by the way, okay. Everything should be working well. <laughs> I've checked my microphone. I've plugged it in. I didn't plug it in um, recently, which is the reason why it sounded really echoey and strange. It was actually having to pick up from one of the cameras, I think. The microphone, the good microphone's in. The volume should be right. Um, I'm not too dark or bright or whatever it was. Oh, I've got a couple of little blue shiny freckles on my face. But anyway, everything should be working correctly. And this is not the only background that you're going to see. I'm actually going to have a bookshelf or a table behind me with some things of interest. It's just, you know, it's all a process, man. It takes time. And Ellie has had a, a house full of fellas. In fact, okay, you know, I'm, I'm digressing a lot, but I'm going to anyway. The last fellow left this morning, left. No more builders, no plumbers, no carpenters, no, I don't even know what they were. All I know is they were drillers and, and bangers and they were driving the dog crazy and driving me crazy. And then when they left, the painters showed up and we had all this, Lolo had to be outside the whole time because otherwise I'd have a house full of dog fur stuck to the walls <laughs> and things like that. They're all gone. It's all finished. Everything's finished. The only thing left to do now is just to live. Oh. It, it's been exhausting and it was ever since I came out of hospital. Now that was a long time ago. It's been going on and on and on. It's back to normal now. So now I get to do the fun stuff. When I find a nice, not too expensive table, probably at a vintage shop or a, a charity shop or something like that. Let me see. They're called op shops in Australia, charity shops in Britain and thrift stores in America. When I find the right one, you'll suddenly see it appear behind me. And then I'll put a couple of things of interest on there. Or I might find a bookshelf. Who knows? It's not just going to be this. But the good thing about this is because it's light. See? Hang on, where's the wall? Hang on, where's the wall? That's the wall. So the wall is not too far behind me. And if I put something there, you'll still be able to see it. It's just that it's going to have this kind of glowy thing on it as well. Anyway, now comes the fun stuff. Right, that's enough of the digression. Let's move on to um, the, the reason why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> which is to do tarot readings. So Janet wanted to know about the the sleep paralysis and the night terrors. Now, I've never had night terrors. There's been something that I've had that was kind of like sleep paralysis. Recently, I've told you that I had a dream about some kind of a dark, malevolent force trying to come up. Well, it wasn't that. I've told you about it recently. It actually happened a while ago. Like a big black shadowy hand came up from down below and tried to grab, I think it grabbed hold of me. Did it grab hold of my arm or was it holding my chest? I can't remember now, but it was, um, had hold of me and I couldn't, um, I couldn't move. And I had that kind of paralysis sensation. But then what I did was I seemed to be aware of, I think it was a, a lucid dream and I seemed to be aware of the circumstances. So what I did was I willed myself to grab hold of this dark shadowy arm. And when I did, 
it freaked out and it disappeared. And I could actually feel it in my fingers. So, um, but I wasn't able to get up off the bed. Um, I've also had a very similar sensation um, a while ago with that temper tantrum to end all temper tantrum dreams about Donald when uh, that day when he was he was taken into the White House bunker during the George Floyd riots. And as it happens, um, at that precise moment, I was over here in Australia having a dream about being stuck in a basement with him with a handful of people. And he was um, half him and half the devil. And he was flying around the room, spitting fire at people. And then he tried to strangle me. And when he tried to strangle me, I could feel his hands around my throat and the pressure of him on my chest. And I couldn't move. I don't know if that was a form of sleep paralysis as well. Um, I very bravely said to him, I'm not afraid of you, but I can vouch for the fact that I was terrified in my dream <laughs> and I've still never gotten over that dream. That was the single most earth shattering dream I've ever had in my life. And it changed the dynamic of this household. We never got over it. Things changed in this house as a result of that dream. Of course, I won't give you the details, but some of you who've known me for a very long time might be able to guess. I'm not going to confirm or deny. Okay, so I'm familiar with that. Let's just see what the cards have to say about this element of sleep paralysis. In uh, science, neurology, um, sleep paralysis, I'm not, you know, I'm not a scientific person, so this may come out all upside down, but sleep paralysis is when your non-essential kind of unconscious functions um, slow down because they're not necessarily the same as the essential functions. So let's just see, like breathing happens automatically, but um, the movement of your arms and legs is something that uh, may shut down during sleep to allow for um, a better quality of rest or better quality of dreaming. So REM um, sleep patterns or something like that to improve, which means that they may have to wake it, wake themselves up in order for you to be able to be fully mobile when you wake up from a dream. And if you wake up very suddenly, there's a possibility that your body might take a bit longer to open and to sort of ramp up those unessential um, bodily functions. You will continue breathing while you're sleeping, unless you have sleep apnea or something of that nature. But Breathing is an unconscious kind of thing that just carries on whether you're awake or asleep. But when it comes to being able to lift yourself out of bed or move your arm left or right or your leg or something like that, or even lift your head, there's a different part of the brain that's used for that. And also it's a different kind of function. And so it may not wake up straight away. Generally, if you give it some time, it will. That I know for sure, because that I've been researching for a previous episode of... Um, of the Human Ascension with Ellie radio show. So I knew that in advance. Let's just see if there's another non-neurological explanation for sleep paralysis. Let's see here. Okay, let's have a look here. So we've got the two of wands the devil and the king of wands in reverse so we're talking about sleep paralysis here the Two of Wands is about planning and decision making and there could be travel delays. Now, the travel delays could be a delay in being able to get moving. You see? You see how it kind of coincides with the neurological. Um, we also then have the Devil, though, and the Devil is about codependency, addiction and bad habits. And, you know, generally the the issue relates to complacency as well because when you're not paying attention to certain things that your addiction might start to take over or you, or you may you know you may fall into old patterns of codependency or something it's about kind of being vigilant or failing to be vigilant actually and then the king of wands in reverse is an arrogant 
um, potentially uh, anger-prone king who has a risk of heart attack or stroke. I think what the cards are saying is that it's acknowledging that there's a sleep paralysis, which is a, a failure to keep to get moving. And that's where the delayed travel kicks in. I wouldn't worry about the planning and decision making. I don't think that's relevant. I think it's the delay in being able to move, which is why you have a sleep paralysis. These two issues here, though, seem to be a little bit more like um, a tendency to be at risk. So the devil may represent things like excessive salt or lack of exercise or you know something that gives you a, a greater risk accelerates the risk or exacerbates the risks that you may already be prone to including things like um, heart attack or stroke so something along that neurological or vascular kind of side so it looks as though in a really shut down kind of um, reduced nutshell. I think the cards are talking about the fact that a sleep paralysis is more likely to occur with people who are prone to certain types of physical conditions. And so it might be an early warning signal that you should be taking better care of certain aspects of your health. I think that's what the cards might be saying. So let's have a look at Night Terrors, which is the other one. Now, Night Terrors, I don't know so much about. Let me see if I can read something here. Okay, so here's some information about Night Terrors. Um, I've just asked the AI bot on Bing. Night Terrors, also known as Sleep Terrors, are episodes of intense fear or terror that occur during sleep. They're distinct from nightmares and are most common in children, though adults can experience them as well. The key characteristics of night terrors, um, they typically happen during the non-rapid eye movement or non-REM non stage of sleep, often in the early part of the night. During a night terror, a person may scream, shout, thrash about or jump out of bed. Their eyes uh, might even be open, but they're not fully awake and usually do not remember the episode. And the episodes of night terror can last from just a few minutes to up to 40 minutes. God. 40 minutes um wow okay and common triggers include being very tired stress anxiety certain medications and fever so i wonder if a person is if an adult is, is experiencing night terrors is there any possibility that it could be related to the medication that they're taking that sounds like it would be something to look into i wonder whether janet has asked her doctor about whether the night terrors could be from medication but also stress and anxiety and fever a person's not going to have a fever their entire life or for most of their life um, they may ex experience a lot of stress or anxiety but let's just see what the cards have to say about night terrors what i just read out was the official word let's just see if there's anything else there So we've got the High Priestess. King of Pentacles in reverse. And the Ace of Pentacles. So the High Priestess is about secrets and mystery and going within. For the answers that you seek. The king of pentacles in reverse is about corruption. It can be about an unloved king, someone who's greedy or exploitative in some way. And then you have this ultimate when it comes to prosperity and well-being. Now, I wonder about this king of pentacles in reverse. Going within is something kind of internal. Well, the ultimate well-being card appears here as Ace of Pentacles, so it could be about health. And I wonder who this king is in reverse that is linked by the pentacle. 
I wonder whether I accidentally kind of knocked it on the head by wondering about medications. There might be an overprescription of something that leads to it as well, or a wrong prescription. And it could be that the well-being element isn't loved by the body, isn't loved from within. So there might be a, a lack of compatibility there. I'm going to try and put down one more card and see if it helps to clarify. And then we've got personality disorder, um, difficult childhood, and uh, malicious slander and gossip. I don't think the malicious slander and gossip is it. The personality disorder might be. Okay. I think that this, what this does is it might be a confirmation of something like medications. Now, I don't know whether Janet takes any medications, and this is not a reading about her specifically. But we do have some kind of tied up elements here that seem to make some sense. We've got this pointing into an internal thing, so looking within for the answer, something on the inside. And then we have these two cards that are linked, which, is, which are about the full ultimate well-being of the body and of the person. So that would include their mind as well. So it's just about well-being and overall prosperity. And then we have something that isn't loved. And I think it may not be conducive to internal health and prosperity. And then we have this disorder, which would indicate that it messes with your head. So there could be medic certain medications that kind of mess with your head which lead to things like night terrors. Obviously, you won't be hearing back from Janet, but it'd be nice if I heard back from Janet. This is not a reading about her. It's just a reading in response to the question about night terrors. Thanks for asking. Well, I'm just about to reach the 90 day point of the Blue JRX Catabolic Awakening program. I'm feeling amazing and I know that I've learned a lot, but one of the most significant points in time happened just the other day. It was actually a viewer who pointed out to me that on a day-to-day -day basis, he hadn't really noticed the change in me. But then he went back and he took a look at a video from around the early part of the program, and that's when he noticed the difference. And so I want to pull up that picture for you to see the change. This is me on day one up there of the program. And of course, this is me here today. I'm going to be carrying on. I'll still be in touch with my health coach. He's already said to me that he's going to be checking in just to see how I'm doing and if there's any support that I need after the program, which I think is amazing, but I'm ready to go solo. I've picked up a lot of new, really good habits and I've let go of some really horrible old ones that weren't doing me any good. If you want to begin your own health journey and start losing weight like I have, and also find the solution to being able to keep it off forever, then follow the link to bluejrx.com and book your own free one-to-one -one consultation. Don't forget to mention that Ellie sent you to get 20% off the program. Actually, before I let that go, I'm going to just test one more thing because I never considered that the cards might be talking about something paranormal. And Janet did ask whether it's possible that there's a paranormal explanation for it for either of those things. So I'm actually going to ask that question when it comes to either sleep paralysis or night terrors. Is there any link to the paranormal? And I guess what that would mean is sort of, oh, actually, hang on a second. That card popped out just like that. And I didn't even think of looking at it first time round. So loss, disappointment, bereavement. I wonder if this is a spirit past. If that card was relevant to the reading, then that would be a response being that there's an element of the paranormal involved. So let's put down three cards and that it could be a past spirit that's disappointed or feeling a bit um, lost and alone wherever they happen to be and they're looking for attention. Let's see. Is there a paranormal or supernatural kind of explanation for either of these? And we're talking about sleep paralysis and night terrors. So we've got the High Priestess in reverse. We've got the Six of Swords in reverse. And we have the Knight of Pentacles. 
so secrets being revealed a predatory element and emerging from depression we then have storms and floods and travel delays and then the knight of pentacles is about the loyal slow moving knight someone who is you know looking at their own issue of prosperity as well um So the storms and the floods could be the night terrors. The travel delay could be the sleep paralysis. And then we have this predatory element, maybe, and a loyal knight. I think a lingering, a lingering knight that's slow moving, slow to move away. You know, and when you couple that with the five of cups that fell down, it could be almost like a trickster that's sort of lingering around. And every now and then, um, just sort of pokes you to see what happens, that kind of thing. I'm not 100% confident about that, but it did. it was possible to get that from the cards. Anywho, thanks for your questions. Uh, Maggie in Patreon has said, would you take a look at Dr. Stephen Greer? He has a program called CE5 on how to make contact with aliens. He seems very interesting in his methods. Are they real or not? If he seems real, he might even make a good human ascension with Ellie Broadcast. <laughs> Thank you as always. Looking forward to your videos. Thank you very much, Maggie. Yeah, actually, um, that, remi that reminds me of something. I have heard back from Bashar's people. Oh, Bashar. Actually, it's um, Daryl Anker is the person who channels Bashar. And I had recently sent you guys off to see if you could get um, Daryl Anker onto the show. Help me get Daryl Anker onto the show, onto the Human Ascension with Ellie show. And also Marshall V and Summers. I haven't heard anything from Marshall V and Summers, but as soon as you all started contacting Daryl Anker's people, they wrote back to me <laughs> and said he's a bit too busy right now, and um, perhaps down the line. So thank you for trying, but it looks like it's a hard no from him at the moment. I'll keep trying as well as time goes on. I think he probably, you know, he's been around for. I think he's been doing this for about 30 years and he has a good set of contacts that are generally Hollywood based and kind of, you know, um, they kind of, it's a circle that keep each other going. And I'm probably not big enough uh, yet to be able to invite someone like Daryl Anker onto the show because there was a bit of a murmur from his people saying, you know, when I've got a bit more experience, that kind of thing, then try again. And so I think I'm just not quite big enough for him yet. However, I will try again because I'd love to have him on the show. And um, I just think it would be an interesting interview and I'd like to hear what he has to say. So thank you for trying. OK, I think I'd probably end up in the same position here with Stephen Greer, but I'm also happy to give this a go as well. I'd love to speak to Stephen Greer. Um, so let's see. We've got here. Does the CE5 work? Is it real? All right. Now, I've previously done a reading on Stephen Greer and uh, because someone asked me whether he is genuine and what the card said I think I did this reading about a year ago and what the card said was that he started off not not really taking it as seriously but he does now that's what the card said the CE5 program you can download it on most of your um, uh, app stores I think it's around about $25 or something to download it and it is a, a tool to help you to be able to manifest contact with otherworldly type of entities. I don't know if we're talking about um, um, holographic type of entities or angels or, um, or extraterrestrials or some kind of, you know, some type of visitation. I've seen a couple of uh, movie length shows by Stephen Greer demonstrating how it's used 
uh, well, you know, sort of in a, in a kind of an up high level way. I've never downloaded it. I've never tried it myself. So let's just see what the cards have to say as to whether or not this is a real thing, whether this app is, you know, whether it works, whether it's, whether it's a genuine thing. I think, you know, whether it works or not may depend on the user, but is it being offered with genuine kind of intent? Let's see. And is it a real thing? So it's a, I think it's a kind of a meditation app that helps you to make contact outside of this 3D existence. I think it's something like that. So we've got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse, the Lovers, Oh, that's interesting. And then we've got the Eight of Swords in reverse. Okay. Well, this is really interesting because I think that chances are Stephen Greer, if he was marketing this, if he was sitting with me right now and talking about this, he'd probably say it exactly the same way that the cards have said it. And so I think the answer is yes, it is a real thing. So what the cards are saying is we've got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. And this is about... Um, you know, the large material or materialistic entity, but it's very material in nature because of all the pentacles, because the pentacles tend to be about materialism and it can be large and prosperous with lots of people working towards it, that prosperity when the card's upright, when it's in reverse, there's a problem there. Now, the problem could be because it's in reverse, all the materialism is starting to become a burden. Uh, alternative explanations for this could be that there's a crack in this material enterprise or of some kind so if it was a club that might be falling apart if it's a political party they might be tanking that kind of thing if it's a society it might be becoming corrupt or a bit dysfunctional but it can also just be the weight of material of the material world and the material aspect weighing really heavily because there's so much of it because you can see it all there's so much of it and then we've got this partnership and connection and a union with the other side, right? So, and there's an element here that's presiding over that. Now we're asking about the CE5 app. The CE5 app could be the unifier between the Eve and the Adam element, which in this card is, you know, the material and the ethereal, say for example, or the spiritual realm. And then this is about finding a new way to release yourself from the bondage of the heavy material um, force. So you'd be stuck inside that material world if the card was round this way, but you kind of lifted out of it and re re released from it. And so when the card is in reverse, so what the cards seem to be saying in a much more simplified way is that this is a, it's like a bridge between the heavy weight of the material existence that we live in and allowing us to be free of that in some way so that we can, we can connect to something and unify with something else. And I think the app is represented by that angel where it is the bridge that kind of helps us to unite with whatever it is that sits outside of our existence. And so this would be a pretty strong yes, it, it's real. But I do think that it would be limited by the either the the confidence or the the practice of you see I don't understand I don't know the app I haven't downloaded the app so I don't know technically how it works. But if you let's just say you go to meditate you go to a meditation class and you're running your shopping list through your head while you're trying to meditate, well, the meditation is not going to be successful because you're really thinking up having to buy chicken and, you know, kitty litter and fill up your tank with gas on the way home and things like that. So your meditation is going to fail. I think that the app is probably the same. So it's going to, you're going to have to focus and learn and practice and things like that. But the app itself appears to be the genuine article according to this.
And you know what that means. It means Ellie's going to have to da download it and have a look for herself. If I do download it and look for myself, I'll definitely tell you. Thanks for the question. Um, now I'm looking at the Ask Ellie a Question video comment section. And I've had a question from Deb Keith. And I think it's Deb says, Hi Ellie, hello. Thank you for being a stable part of life for us. I have a woo-woo question. Excellent, you're in the right spot and it's a pleasure, most certainly. So the question is, when we ascend to 5D, which is a five-dimensional existence, will our world be completely different? Will there be others who ascend before us like a welcoming party? <laughs> like when you go into the dog park and everyone comes to greet you, all with the waggy tails, <laughs> except for Lola, who's got a waggy bum instead. Um, or do we quietly slip into a new feeling where we start to grow into all the new abilities? All right, Deb, actually, it's a bit different to that. I'm going to tell you my perspective, but first I'm going to read the cards. Okay, I've actually just uh, recorded this week's episode of Human Ascension with Ellie, and I'm actually talking about human ascension as a thing and the stages of that. And um, in order to do that, I have to discuss the difference between the three dimensional world and the five dimensional world. So we will get to see that on this channel. However, and so, of course, I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask the cards first and then I'll tell you what I believe uh, 5D is. So, so what will 5D be like? Is there going to be a welcoming party? Is there going to be uh, new abilities? Are we all going to know? Or are some people going to go first? What can we expect? Let's just see what the cards have to say about that. So we've got the Ace of Wands. The Ten of Wands. Hmm. And then the Eight of Wands. You see how they're all from the Wand Suite, which is action and inspiration. So there's inspiration, and I am, um, and I think the inspiration really is about um, opening the mind. So the mind is expanding, and I think that's what this is as well. So we've got this ultimate rush of energy and inspiration here. We then have an unexpected, difficult event. Um, where we've got lots of things lining up to kind of, um, they might act as challenges, they might be difficulties, you know, but they're probably going to happen very unexpectedly. And they may also be growing pains as well. And then we've got this Ten of Wands, which is about stress, tough times, burden and responsibility. Now, if I look at them from left to right, yes, but if I look at it from right to left, it is probably a lot easier to explain. From right to left, we've got this unexpected difficult event. So things are, you know, a series, it could even be a series of them, which are challenges that just keep coming more and more at a time. We then have a burden that really is so difficult to carry. And then there's like this release of energy and inspiration. And I actually think what this is, is this is the mounting up of more and more and more until the dam finally breaks. That's what I see here. Let's just see if there's an end result. And so this could be people who are ascending as well. The fact that they're, it would appear that they're descending here, because generally what we look for is we look for, um, yeah, I can see why they've done that, right. We look, for, okay, so normally when you're looking at the Eight of Wands, you're traveling down this way and you're seeing the buds of prosperity when you get all of your ducks in a row. And so change, motivation and everything is moving that way. But in order for you to ascend, you have to travel upwards. Normally this card would demonstrate that we don't know where we're going, which is the reason why the end of the wand has been cut off by the parameters of the card. But if you're going to ascend, then you may be traveling the opposite way. 
Now think about the recent um, episode that I did on Human Ascension with Ellie, which if you've been listening to the radio show, I'm talking about how the Earth's core, oh, actually I did a reading on it as well. The Earth's core is uh, always spinning and apparently it's impossible for it to stop spinning because we'd all be dead if that happened. However, it must have because it now is spinning in the wrong direction um, quite recently. In order to do that, it would have to stop spinning or slow down, get to the point of stopping and then start going the wrong way. And so somehow that has happened. Well, if these, if this is heading the wrong way, then it could be because we are ascendant into a new kind of reality. So you see why the card is suddenly looking a bit topsy-turvy. And these are all the challenges that are presented by that, one by one by one with the people who are ascending out of that turmoil until it becomes a really heavy burden to bear. So think of a set of scales and suddenly it becomes a heavy burden and it tips over into a new inspired kind of reality. And I think one of the reasons why it's appeared backwards is to demonstrate that we're actually going the other way, right? So I think that is the cards explanation. The explanation that I would give is a little bit different. Um, and that is that I believe from the things that I've learned that 5D is 3D plus an extra overlay. And so the example that I give, um, actually I give it in the in, in the radio show this week, is let's just say that you've been rushing to work every single day and you, every time you're rushing to work every day, you're walking or driving past a wall. And it's a great big wall and you've always considered it to be a blank wall. It's just blank, a big blank wall, nothing to look at as you're rushing by. And then one morning when you're rushing to work, you happen to glance at the wall and you see there's a a sign there that says welcome and below the sign is a door so it's not actually a blank wall there's a door there with a sign saying you know welcome please enter you were so busy rushing towards your 3d existence that you'd never glanced over and seen that there was actually a door there now that you can see the door the door is like an overlay on top of the wall so not only do you have your 3d wall you also have your 5d door that allows you to do more than you did before and I actually think that's what 5D is I think it's actually 3D with an overlay over it which allows us to continue to live in this world but from a different more uh, vibrationally high perspective so that we can actually see or experience more and understand more of the world it doesn't mean I think it doesn't mean that everything is going to suddenly be perfect. I think what it means is that we're going to be more aware. We're going to be more alive and we're going to be more prepared and more actionable and more, more, whatever that extra layer is that gives us more to be able to resolve some of the things that we've seen. And that's the reason why it's kind of a slow transition. It gives us a chance to learn something and do something about it and learn something and do something about it. So I actually think it's an overlay that happens in conjunction with the three-dimensional existence. Thank you for the question. So that's it for your woo-woo today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This is Ellie Dreams and Under. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams.